three time. Hanko, we're gonna win this. This is two thirds of the winning team today. Let's I will most definitely. Yo, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? You guys want to see a fight? Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I got tournaments gonna start soon. I'm ready. Tim Hortons coffee. We're ready to go. We're on like two hours of sleep, but that's all we need. I don't need sleep. I need answers. If I really wanted, I'll be on zero hours sleep because we're playing the best deck today. We're playing 60 cards. Or we cut our list actually. We're no longer playing 60 cards. We're playing 40 cards, Scarecrow. So I'm excited. I really hope we don't need to do a deck list. Cause we can go ask them if we need that. Oh, <laughs> yo, thank you for the support, bro. Yo, thank you for the support. I appreciate that. No yo, should, should everyone watching this video also buy it? They should, you got your right now. Actually, it's sold out, you guys can't, but get the other ones. All right, yo, winning team, winning team, strategize. Team huddle, team huddle, team huddle. I'm gonna go walk around. This, this locals is humongous. This locals is humongous. We're gonna win today. I'll show you guys a bit of the new list. We're playing 40 cards today, uh, 42. We're playing 12 hand traps, 30 engine cards. Way more compact. Same Brave Scarecrow deck. It's insane, you need to play it. If you guys saw the last locals, I OTK'd so many people with one card. That's the idea of the deck. The strategy of today is very simple. We're going to utilize five of our six cards going second to bait every single interruption our opponent has, both in the field and in the hand. Set up one negate, and then the sixth card in our hand is always going to be a one card OTK. All right, everyone is witness. Once we win, I'm going to sing the Masaroy National Anthem full volume from beginning to end in front of the whole store. We're going to have six rounds today. So my, uh, my our plan is we gotta go 36 and 0 as a team. Not a single game loss. If something will happen, you know, someone might have Jewel. So we'll go 35 and 1. That's the plan. Anything less is failure. Let's go, baby. Our team name today is Zizbra. Wow! Yo guys, I figured out an absolute five head play. I'm gonna go around asking everyone for a video. They're gonna think it's for a video. That hey, what do you guys think about Jewel this format? And I'm gonna figure out if they're gonna play Joel or not. I'm gonna convince them otherwise. Hey, YouTube. What are you what doing? Are you doing? <laughs> huh? Huh? Me? Me? <laughs> Yo, guys, I'm just running a little scientific experiment. So, what do you guys think of Joel and Lockwood? It's uh, the best. <laughs> Does that mean that it's currently in your deck for like if you were to enter a tournament today or something? Absolutely not. Okay. Hey, guys, so I'm just running a scientific experiment. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think of the card? Maybe you guys have heard of it. It's pretty shit. Joel and Lockwood. And like you probably are playing it today in the tournament. Like if you were to enter a tournament today, like oh no no, some, I would never put that card. Yeah, like probably would. <laughs> exactly. I don't know yes, I mean. six players without drama. Thanks, guys. That's a scientific experiment, of course. Yo, guys, can I do a quick experiment with you guys? What do you guys think of the card, Joel and Lockwood? Oh. It's shit, right? Best so it's card. like Let's if you were to like enter like a regional like today or something, like you probably like wouldn't play it today, right? See, that's nine players without drama today. <laughs> Team secret strategy huddle. So our game plan today. We're gonna win. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. Yes. Carry us today. Yeah. We got this. We got this. We got this. All right. So for your deck, all right? I, I normal summon in the defense mode. Which zone? No. Which zone? I don't know. It's tough, but I know you'll make the right choice for your deck. Are you prepared to draw the Dimension Shifter against every deck? Good, good. And remember, if you face against Christy Ramirez, don't go Shangri-La. That's how I destroyed them. Let's go! I'm gonna face all Christy I'm using every ounce of strength in my body right now, not to scream let's go, out of respect of everyone, but I really love Yu-Gi-Oh! And round, first round's up, so I'm so excited. Team Zizbra, let's go! Yu-Gi-Oh! Locals, baby! Let's go! Glad to have you guys here on this beautiful 3v3. This is the Dune Sneak Peek, and I'm playing Scareclaw, baby. This is my favorite deck of the format. Actually, it's kind of tied with Adventure Synchron. As you guys saw my first place Synchron list I posted, first place at a Dune case. It was also 3-on-3 three three with Synchron Adventure. What we're doing now is we're playing Scareclaw, and what Scareclaw does is it plays around all cards my opponent has. Check the right card, my opponent ashes. Do you think I remotely give a flying shit? No, I don't care. It doesn't matter. You just go to the right phobia, you continue playing. Vice is Starfrost. I got Astrolot and Great. I just continue playing. And 
The one deck that gets so much more of a buff in the new format is Scareclaw. Manadium Scareclaw. I'm putting scoops there, obviously. I'm playing the best deck. And this is going to be quite quick. Why? Because I told you why. I'm playing Scareclaw. This deck does not lose. Now, as mentioned earlier, I got first place with Synchro Adventure uh, at a Dune case. Uh, this was about a week after this day. But we have so many vlogs coming up for you guys. In fact, there's going to be videos every single day for the next 13 days. Confirmed. Why? Because I've been grinding out here. And I know you guys are going to love the content. There's going to be a lot of new Dune duels. So lots of duels with every single new deck. I've been testing with every deck of the new format. So you guys are able to see different decks in action. And I make and gladly because I go to many different locals. I go to probably five, six locals in the area. Now I don't know how your city is, but Toronto has a locals every single day. So in order to get you guys the best content, make sure I go to multiple different ones. So you guys are able to see different duels and different players. Now, this is something you don't see every day, that's trap tricks. And <laughs> I'm just laughing all the way to the bank. Because I don't care what what board my phone is gonna put up here. My deck destroys boards. That is something that Syncron Adventure does not do as well as Scareclaw. What Scareclaw does so incredibly well is I six card combo my opponent's whole board like it's my day job. That's the whole idea of the deck. Where you utilize the first five cards of the deck to kind of waste your opponent's cards. And the sixth card is that one card access code Vicious Astrolab. That's what the deck does. It basically defeats all your opponent's interruptions with the last card being a one card full combo. Fenrir is the best card to start with in this deck because Fenrir will be able to get you Scareclaw, Fenrir, and then you continue going. Of course, he's forced to set it. I normal Scareclaw right card, and he does have to stop this, and he does right away. He floodgates it again. The effect still does trigger, so now I have two sets. What am I ever going to do with two sets? Well, I special, I normal. Guess what? I'm going to use Thrust because he used Rafflesia. Now I have a few options. I can go Thrust. There's plenty of plays here. Thrust into Talents. I could draw. I could take. There's so many plays. Due to my head not being that crazy, I decided to draw. And now I'm going to go into Field Spell. And I have Scareclaw, Kishtira. All I have to do now is banish a Scareclaw from my hand and I'm at, or Kishtira. And I'm actually able to continue playing. Phobia here would be an absolute game changer. The reason why Phobia will be an absolute game changer is the fact that I could pop a set. I op optimally decide just to pass my turn. Because he's supposed to OTK and destroy two sets. On top of that... When he destroys one of my monsters at face down defense, I'm able to summon Scarecrow Kashtira. And I actually have a Nibiru in my hand. So he is, does a pretty good job here of clearing my monsters. What he doesn't know is that I have Scarecrow Kashtira in my hand and a Nibiru. So I try and bait his card so I can actually resolve my Nibiru. Uh, my Nibiru is... He, I'm hoping he doesn't play Gravedigger Trap Hole, which he does. And he did Gravedigger Trap Hole my Nibiru. I'm like, who the fuck? Like, that card useless against my deck. You're going first. But he played it. He said for the Nibiru. So that's fair. The card is useless against my deck. Grave Grave tra 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 Trap Hole. What are you going to do, bro? It's going to stick in your hand. But guess what? It does stop the Nibiru. So it worked out that he ended up playing it. Uh, I should have probably gone a little more aggressive in the last turn. But I thought it's fucking Trap Trick, bro. <laughs> what the heck Trap Trick going to do? OTK my board? Turns out that's exactly what he did. But that's fine. That's what we have game three for. To let your opponent win one game via half a misplay. And then you just win the other. Very simple. So here, uh, we're actually going to be able to go first here. Uh, we won going second, the uh, game one. So now, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to win the duel. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to draw a hand. And I'm going to actually casually look at my beautiful uh, play mat. Because it's probably the sexiest play mat I've ever seen in my life. The Draco Slayer play mat. That's actually my favorite. So make sure to go check out the Draco Slayer play mat at tripgaming.com. Because that's one of the sexiest mats I've ever seen in my life. Next, I'm going to normal Enchantress and go Vice of Star Frost to destroy it. This will not be able to give me a free Vice of Star Frost. And on top of that, putting up a Griffin before with a fifth summon. I'm now going to go on to Lightheart. And this is full combo and a half. I'm going to set up Scarecrow Slash because now I have Scarecrow Slash and Griffin to stop evenly plus evenly. I'm going to go into Scarecrow Tryheart, which will be able to give me a lot of free pluses. What a lot of people don't understand about this, I have five, six cards in my hand right now. I have Double Negate, I have Fenrir in hand, I have Hand Traps, and I have full follow up to kill him next turn. This is why, like, you don't, like, the whole Manadium stuff, why the reason I don't like it is this, this is plenty enough to win. This is Scareclaw Splash, all this stuff going defense, like, I obliterate him. He goes Talents, uh, I'm going to opt to just, uh, like, negate, because why not? And then he even leaves my whole board, and I'm left with right. But he has nothing left. He wasted all his cards, he draws me after that, which clearly he drew for turn. Literally irrelevant, because he has two cards, I have six. So I'm like, sure, dude. No problem, draw, it's a good card, but it's not good enough. So here, I'm going to summon this. Uh, I'm able to do quite a lot of damage here. He does one set and one card in hand. I have right card. I have right of Hermes here. I have right of Hermes here. This is a 3v3, so he's getting a little coached right now. 
not none of the coaching in the world will help uh, unless uh, it's coaching from Steven Trifonovsky. And that coach will be to play a better deck. Let's go. Baron, a pop, attack. Uh, he's at like 1,000 life points. Uh, there's nothing to do. I think there's like two minutes left as well. That is my turn and to battle phase I attack. Uh, the, the deck is just too powerful, especially in the grind game because I have 101 card combos. And that's the duel. So 1-0. Let's see how we do in the next round. Let's go. Great match there. We're now on to round two. We're going to now win the next three. And we have to. All right, guys, next round. You'll never believe who I'm facing. You guys want to know what, what he said to me when we were entering? He told me, Steven, you ugly Macedonian fuckhead. And I was like, that was so, I actually started to cry. Then he was like, keep crying, pussy. Just kidding. I said that to him. <laughs> I said to you, you're going to cry right now after I beat your deck. All right, on to the next duel. And I'm facing... My arch nemesis. Am I gonna win? Obviously. What the heck? When have I ever lost? Now, one thing that very bothers that bothers me quite a lot is I actually did not angle the video correctly, but it doesn't matter because my opponent's gonna need all the help he, he can get. And guess what? You think I'm gonna lose the Dragon Link? I, my, I don't think I ever lost a Dragon Link since 2017. And guess what? That's not gonna change in this duel, especially when, uh, guess what? LP's banned. Pisty, well, what? Pisty, sure. Agar Payne's banned. They're all banned. Everything's banned. Except for my deck. Because my deck's the best in the game right now. Other than Pendulum, of course. Now, I want you guys to look closely at these plays. What Dragon Link is good at, it's very good at control. So, it's going to set up a, a, a mid-board. It's a very mid-range deck right now. Very mid-range. But it does have a lot of defensive cards. And what this battle is going to essentially be, it's going to be the battle of which mid-range deck does more interrupt... Puts up not just more interruptions, but applies the most pressure... And all of that. So I know he's playing a mid-range deck. I've had a Ghost Mourner in my hand for the last, like, 10 plays. I could have used Ghost Mourner. And I specifically saved it for the Lubelion. Why? Because I could Ghost Mourner some Tracer or whatever. But there's no value given. I want. I need to stop the interruptions. Ghost Mourner hitting a Lubelion basically ensures that I'm going to have to deal with one less interruption right now. So because I could deal with one, one less interruption, my hand can now pretty easily break through this board. Despite the fact that I did actually brick here. So I'm going to have normal Enchantress, enter battle, and attack the seal. I hope that he bounces the Enchantress, because I'm not going to get a free Enchantress through that. And he's debating if he wants to bounce his follow-up, or if he wants to bounce the, the seal. So he ends up bouncing the follow-up, which is a very good play on his end. And I have a decision if I want to pop the Magnema, and I decide not to. The reason why is that I want a free monster in defense. So I have Vice's Star Frost in my hand that I need to hit the field, and I have Reich Phobia that could then pop a card. Because he negated my Vice's Star Frost, I had no play. My hand was so bad. It, it just wasn't enough to stop through all this. Because if I use Enchantress, it gets negated by Dispatter. And then I had no other play to actually like play. <laughs> so that was the play I had to do over there. I just had to hope that he played it incorrectly. When you brick, you have to give your opponent a salute, an opportunity to misplay. When you brick, you can't just say, oh, I brick, I lose GG. You have to, do, you have to uh, choose your plays that your opponent might negate. So what I did there was hope that he let the Enchantress resolve. I hope that he were to... Uh, I had to battle, bounce the seal. I had to hope that some of the plays he did were in my favor. It didn't, and I lost. So now we're going to go to the next game, and I have Griffin set up with my whole Scareclaw combo. There's nothing my opponent will be able to do to stop me. I make sure to set up the Scareclaw Splash if you play this deck. If you have no way to stop double evenly, always get Scareclaw Splash, pull side, double evenly. I'm talking about evenly, Regeki, Imperm evenly. Because if, they, if evenly resolves on this board, my Red of Your Miss here because it's on the field, the token's on the field. Everything goes except the token because token is going to be banished face down. So I make sure to resolve double evenly, essentially. Uh, there he, he sets up the uh, uh, Bistial to be able to attack my Scareclaw. I'm forced to negate it because he could just enter the battle phase and attack the Lightheart. He goes Tracer and I just instantly flip, uh, flip there can be only one, which is literally just auto win against Dragons. The, the, there's truly just no, no answer to this. So you go to Book of Eclipse. I'm like, that's fine. I'm not going to play the talent whatsoever. And that's a huge thing you got to understand with the Scareclaw as well. You're able to get so many traps and cards that don't play the Talents and Thrust. Especially if you play Rusty. I was playing Rusty, Boots, Double Fog Blade for quite a while. And the reason why is that all the traps that you put up, all the interruptions you put up are traps. So by putting interruptions that are traps or spells, you don't play the Talents and Thrust. Which is something very important. I actually think he had Talents in his hand as well. Which is like, as I said, it literally just saved the game. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to go to game number three here and time is a factor. Time is a huge factor here. I, I don't know why, but it wasn't a factor. Actually, no, I think it's because each of our turns were long as shit, but, uh, it, it does become a factor. So I think this, this duel is going to be a very nice duel. I think it's going to go into like turn uh, like quite a lot of turns. Uh, but here, uh, he actually makes me go first. 
So that caught me off guard massively because I, I sided a good amount. And the cards that I sided, though, they're also pretty good for going first and second, I believe. But I did have a panker tops in my hand that was dead. For this tournament, I sided half hand traps, half board breakers. The reason why is that there was a flood. Uh, I forgot which. I think it was a, like two branded that I saw. And they were playing the gimmick puppet. So I had to make sure the gimmick puppet didn't stop me. Uh, so over here, I set up as much as I can. But keep in mind that all my, I sided out all my traps. Because I sided out all my traps... Uh, I couldn't actually get a uh, right card going because what right card gonna get me? So I just uh, got a bunch, as much as follow up as humanly possible. Like right phobia in my hand. I have Panker tops, I believe, in my hand as well because I, I think something else for going second. Uh, maybe it was a dark ruler. I think I discarded it, but I made sure to have as much as follow up as humanly possible because I have so many good cards for going second. So all I really have to do is just survive. So th this is a huge trick that people do, especially in, in the Kishtira format, where the trick is to make your opponent go second. He's dark. He's forced to dark ruler my pen here. I keep the griffin in hand. Y'all see that shit? He had dark ruler in his hand all along. If I special my griffin, I would have got absolutely cooked to the dark ruler. But I saved the griffin in my hand, knowing he dark rulers my pen here. So I, the dark ruler now basically acts as an imperm and not a dark, not not a dark ruler. So I special my griffin afterwards to get the free negate up. So he he's struggling. The turn he taking out like rightfully so. His turn like he he has to win now, or he knows the next turn he's he's, he's destroyed to my panker tops and stuff like that. So. Uh, he goes talents. He literally drew the talents off that draw. I'm like, dude, you're fucking insane. You literally drew a fucking talents off that draw. That that is. I, I was actually tilted. I was like, what the like? I played that so perfectly to still get uh, rewarded uh, for you to get rewarded like that. But the duel's not over yet. I just need to draw a good card here. He talents me for turn. So let's see what card I could draw for top deck here. I have no panker tops. I do have right phobia uh, on my hand. I have a nice follow up. I I could do some damage. Keep in mind right now that uh, time is of the essence. I need to do some damage uh, badly. He is Boraland, and he's going to set up his steel to spatter. Uh, he gets rid of my token, so I can't Draco back. He's still going to have Striker Dragon, Levenir, and he's still going to set up quite a, a decent amount of interruptions. Uh, gets rid of my Faithful as well, so I can't get a monster out. So I only have a Fenrir, I have a Reg Phobia, and I draw Talents for turn. <laughs> All that for nothing, baby. Talents, take. And time is of the essence for my opponent. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I just have to do some damage. I go Baron. And that does just game. I'm going to pop. End your battle. Attack for game. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I could think. Or I could draw talents. No need to think. Thanks. Uh, GG. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yo. That match was crazy. I went right down to the wire. We're, we're 2 0. So our team came out on top. Now we have two more rounds. For the, I, I, I top deck the talents. It was crazy. A great match. We have two more matches to go. And then we have top deck. Let's go. Send energy. Yo, we won the raffle. Let's go. Four more to go. And we're going to win the case. Uh, we came here to win the case. Not to finish first or second or some shit. Got to win the case. Uh, I think this is going to be the last turn we're going to have before we play with uh, the new cards. So I, I do like the format, but it's going to change a bit with Dune. And our, our deck gets a huge bump. We're actually gonna play with Manadiums in the deck now because with Dune, there's so much incredible support. So I look forward to that and stay tuned for that deck list. Also, while I have you guys here, one week only before the Draco Slayer playmat's gone. Get your Draco Slayer playmats right now, guys, on www.tripgaming.com. In one week, they're off the website oh permanently. Is that Juan or is that M-Pen? I, nice. yeah. What? Uh, Next round's about to start, let's go. Let's go, let's see if we could take Champion, my Draco Slayer playmat to victory. Let's go. This is very important that we must win this game. We're facing up against Kishtira. Kishtira is by far the easiest matchup for, for our deck. Now, in the new format with Dune, any uh, Scareclaw, sorry, Kishtira will not be played as much as it was last format. However, however, after about two, three weeks pass, when the new cards kind of like the hype dies down to the new cards, people will go back to Kishtira, in which regard this deck will be insane. So I opened double imperm to stop both of them. Uh, this my my setup's crazy. Like uh, because you are able to arise hard so freely. Y'all see what I did there? You're able to one Fenrir in your hand could easily turn into a rise heart because you could do that. It, it just offers so damn much for your for, for your uh, cards. He imperms the the rise heart, which is no problem. I could Zeus at any given time that I want, but why Zeus? So I can just win. You feel me? So here I set up a Draco back to, to bounce that. I still have the Rise Heart. I, I vice his Star Frost. He has one card in, in his hand. Uh, I go Light Heart. Uh, he, he's going to banish the spells. I go Effect here to I'll be able to search and draw because there's three monsters in defense. Uh, I then I'm going to link those into Dark to take his Rise Heart. 
or is going to be hit with a Scarecrow Kashtira. This is great news because I could just access code, pop all his shit, and uh, win. That was, dude, that was, that was an OTK versus full, full Kashtira combo, and he had double Imperm. He had double Imperm, full Kashtira combo. No fucking problem, mate, yeah? No problem, bro. Like, all you need to out that shit is one Fenrir, bro. Like, <laughs> I can't stress this enough. In Kashtira format, dude, we were cooking Kashtira players left, right, and center. Because all you have to do when they go Kashtira combo is you special your own Fenrir. You then simply just go into your own Arise Heart because they use Shangri-La. You simply enter the battle phase and you simply Zeus their ass. Now, of course, if they have other cards, you play accordingly. But that was enough. What happened here? We oversided. Bro, we oversided and he made us go first. He cooked us. This is the second time this happened. He made us go first, and we oversided, and our only play was Enchantress, and he ghost belled it. And I'm like, bro, you got to be fucking kidding me. We oversided heavily, and basically my hand is just all a bunch of stuff that does, does nothing. <laughs> uh, so he's going to go into Zeus. I still have a chance here. I still have a chance here. I go into Enchantress number two, and I get to another hand trap, and I'm like, all right, see you later. That's game. We are now going to go on to game number three, the all-encompassing important game three. But guess what? I've never lost to Kashtira this format, and uh, I don't intend to lose to it this upcoming format. Nothing changes, buddy. Nothing changes. When you have a Fenrir in your deck, and you have a Rise Heart, just, I don't even make a Rise I don't hard make a Rise Heart in my life. The only way you, I ever make a Rise Heart is by my opponent's Shangri-La effect with my Fenrir. That's it. So what happens here... I was debating letting him go first. And I'm thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? My deck's unstoppable. I'm going first. <laughs> I was debating it. But you know what? When you play the best deck in the game, who cares? Right? On top of that, even if my opponent could break my board with his spells, uh, I'm just going to re break his board. So it's irrelevant. I search for Scarecrow Twin Saw, which is low key. It's such a ridiculously insane card. I also make sure to get as much follow up as humanly possible, which is very, very vital. I set up a Baron as well, and I hard drew the right Phobia. So he imprimed Dark Hole my entire board. Uh, my Twin Cell is dead, uh, but he also bricked. Uh, to, <laughs> I talents the rest of his hand. I go Fenrir. We're both playing a brick game here where he has a shit ton of hand traps, and I have a bunch of cards to stop him. So uh, I wouldn't really call it a brick though, because I'm like setting up fully. Uh, I already used my Baron, so I can't go into Baron in that scenario. So I'm just thinking, uh, what should I do here? Should I do as much damage as possible? Uh, I have no other Synchro Tank. I used the Baron last turn. I just go into Alsa to take the Ghost Spell. Uh, I summon an Astro Loud. I can't actually go for game here, but I just set up a, a big board. I attack, I attack, I attack. He's on one turn. I have three interruptions. And uh, I go into Axis Code after to pop his set. It was Dark Hole. He draws. Uh, he gets Prosperity. And that Prosperity uh, is going to get nothing. Uh, also, I had jobs, GG. <laughs> great match, great match. Uh, we're now actually going to go straight to Top Cut. So, we're first place in Top Cut, obviously, as I told you guys, like, two to three hours ago. So, Top Cut's about to start soon. Guys, I'm on, like, two hours of sleep right now. But it doesn't matter, because we're, where there's a pendulum, there's a way. Right now, we're playing out of our mind, bro. We're playing insane. My deck is so good. This literally is the meta call. Yeah, I wish I could go back in time and go to Nats, because... Dude, we literally just can't lose. It's crazy. Even the game two, when we opened, uh, like what, six adventure cards of a seven? How the fuck's that even possible? We only play set six. Crazy, bro. But anyways, easy victory. So we're going to see what happens now in the top cut. They're going to need to dodge us. We are by far the number one seed. We are by far the team to beat. And what, what that's what's expected when you play with Trip Gaming. So uh, we have two more top cuts to start very soon. So all we gotta do now is win two and win a case. So, and I would like to get myself some Revolution Synchrons. I will most definitely be using them in all my decks. And yeah, let's go. Yo guys, what's your record? X2. X2, oh, shout out to you top. It's okay, I'll top for you guys. Oh shit, you guys still play. Oh shit, we're another one. Two minutes. Oh man. Greasy, greasy. Is that like Gaga got Cowboy in your X today? <laughs> Yeah, oh, what the, what the, what the? <laughs> Team Zeus Bra is undefeated. 20 seconds left in the round. I literally told you guys like four hours ago that we're gonna be undefeated. So now we're gonna see how it goes in the actual top cut. Now the tournament starts. Now it starts. The last was just round robin. I'm undefeated. 
Oh, yeah. I dropped. You, you guys saw it. So. Dropping games doesn't matter. It's about the match. It do, don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. A win's a win. This bra. This bra, yeah. Can't. Yo, I, I get a feeling I'm winning this raffle, guys. I need the mat, guys. Now my life is incomplete. I guess all I'm gonna do now to complete it is just destroy my opponent and I start too low. It's Zizbra versus Djen. There's only one Djen here, and it's Hanko. Let's go. Oh, he's outing Hanko. So, opponent, do you think you're gonna beat me now in the top cut? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're playing. Uh, I can tell you. You can tell me. If you ask, I will tell you. I will want it in a secret. Okay, good. I want to see what spice you're on. Good, I got you, I got you. I'm playing uh, Kastira, best deck. Winner of this wins the entire tournament. Are we going to win? Let's figure out. I am going to be facing off against Vanquish Soul. Now, Vanquish Soul is a deck that I actually took to a regional myself. I told you guys I wanted to try every single deck so you guys could see a bunch of content as well. I can't really fill my regionals, obviously. But here's the thing with Vanquish Soul. When it draws Razen, it, it's a really strong deck. Uh, he's playing Pinpoint Landing, which is very cool. It's going to be able to draw once on every single turn. It's like a second heavy Borger, essentially. You could draw your turn and your opponent's turn. Very nice card. I actually do, do like that card. Uh, one downside of Razen is, look, like this deck, is, if you draw Razen, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, here with my hand, I decided to imperm that. I don't think my hand was that crazy, but I'm going to play it out to see uh, uh, what interruptions my opponent are going to use and at what time. Uh, never just scoop. Never just scoop. Uh, see if your opponent kind of misplays and you might have a chance. He opts to ash the griffin, uh, which is no problem. Uh, or was it the Draco back he might have ashed? Uh, instantly going to go into Donner. Uh, I knew if I summoned Fenrir, I was going to get popped. So what I did was I summoned those cards first to pop his cards so I could resolve my Fenrir after. It's a big brain play to, to make sure your Fenrir resolves. If my Fenrir gets Dust Devil, I knew I lost. Sadly, that was my only answer to get the Scareclaw combo. So what I did there, if I knew if I, I knew if I summoned Fenrir, that shit was getting Dust Deviled right away. So what I did was I, I basically started with the with the uh adventure cards uh then donnered after that way i could actually resolve special fenrir and then resolve my uh scareclaw combo uh but that's the downside when you don't actually hard draw any scareclaw or vice star frost or any field spell uh but it's a pretty big brain play sadly he did have the triple interruption that we didn't kind of the double interruption we didn't really know he had uh so that's fine uh, good good game to him there that's 1-0 for my opponent uh when you go second and you you hard brick uh you kind of like you have to hope your opponent doesn't have too many defensive cards that you're not, unaware of. Uh, the three interruptions my opponent had, we were we are aware, but the ones we didn't, uh, we were good through one of them, but we were good through four, not five. But yeah, or we are good through three, not four, uh, despite the brick hand. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to go on to, we're, we go first here. Uh, we're going to so go right soft, right soft. We'll get Fenrir. Fenrir will we'll get us uh, the next card. We get Faithful. I remember my head was not that crazy. Uh, anytime you, the game plan is to get the Scareclaw. If you get the Scareclaw combos, uh, you will be able to have yourself quite a nice duel. So I go Faithful uh, to set up the Enchantress. I special that to go with the Lightheart. Uh, my Lightheart will now be able to get a Scareclaw. However, I did have to go into it kind of weird. And I'm not able to draw. Uh, that's okay though. Uh, typically the deck you do want to draw. I set up Scareclaw Clash simply because I don't have no board breaker. Uh, no, no interruptions for board breakers. Uh, I flip Scareclaw Clash right away. And I flip Anti-Spell. Uh, that does get hit with Super Poly. Uh, that was a very nice Super Poly because it's able to stop... Not just my anti-spell, but the Scareclaw Twin Saw, or Scareclaw Splash. And my anti-spell hurts me now, uh, which is a downside. So I kind of got to go super fast. I get the field spell here to get a Kashtira. This is going to be a very cool grinding game where anti-spell is hurting the both of us. Because anti-spell is hurting the both of us, it's basically who's, which Fenrir is going to win. He has Fenrir and Karikara and Demon Carnet. Uh, but fuck, the anti-spell is hurting me, boys. I need to get my Draco back out there ASAP. So I have special Fenrir. I'm like, all right, a special Fenrir. I have an option here. Because of the field spell, I'm, I'm boosted a bit by attack. So I could uh, attack into uh, his Fenrir and his Karikara and destroy both. So by entering the battle phase, I go Fenrir, attack uh, the Fenrir, and then Fenrir effect, banish the Karikara. But because I'm at 25, I destroy the other Fenrir. And did I just miss that? Holy fuck, that was a, literally a fucking ginormous misplay. My Fenrir is at 2,500, boys. Y'all see that? That was a fucking ginormous misplay. I literally just wasted my Fenrir for nothing. So I basically didn't realize that I had field spell in the field. And what that would have done was... Uh, yo, I just realized... Oh, that was Desires. Okay, I thought it was Prosperity. Never mind. Because he would play Prosperity and Pinpoint Landing. I don't agree with. That was a fucking tremendous misplay. Holy fuck. And uh, so I didn't receive my field spell. So I could have destroyed his Fenrir. And I could have destroyed his Karikara. Uh, that's fucking disgusting. I'm ashamed that I even didn't even catch that. But guess what? That happens to everyone. At this point, my opponent actually Fenrir is into Anti-Spell. So I I'm thinking letting him banish the Anti-Spell. Because the only way I lose is Duster. And of course he has a fucking Duster. 
Fuck, oh my god. Y'all see that there? So he Fenrir attacked my Fenrir and he chose to use the effect to banish anti-spell. My thought was, yo, I need him to get rid of this anti-spell for me. <laughs> the only way we lose is if he duster. Because I have Imperm, I'd be safe. And then I got fucking a duster before. I was so disappointed, so sad. that I'm like, bro, we played that fine with the exception of Fenrir for getting the field spell. And we get absolutely toasted to the duster. But you know what? We played the odds and the odds just played us. It's all good. We do end up losing this game. Uh, the what we deserve for that mistake. But you know what? Top four. We got a bunch of packs. It's all good. Oh, shit. Oh. Yo, first few packs. Thrust and Revolution. Let's go. <laughs> oh Yo, two Revolution hey, Synchrons. Hey, oh, hey, shit. Hey, Yo. Okay. Let's go. See what we're going to pull your boys? We didn't lose, but at least we had fun, and we pulled some decent packs. So not bad. It was very fun. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I can't wait to go to more locals. And oh, Damn. oh, let's go! Oh, what? <laughs> let's go. Yo, our packs are busted. Thrust, thrust, and two revolution synchrons. Dude, look at our packs. It's fucked. Wow, we should have lost. Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, whoever thought losing would have been so good.